In this video, I'm going to talk you through React Router version 4 and some of the changes compared to version 3. I've got here a project I've used Create React App to create and I'm going to go ahead and install React Router. Now the first change between version 4 and version 3 is the name of the npm package. In version 4, the package has been split up into three separate packages. You have the React Router core package, which has the core functionality of React Router. You then have React Router DOM, which is for building web applications. And you then have React Router native, which is for building mobile applications. Now, because we're building a web application, we're going to go ahead and install React Router DOM. So head on over to your terminal and npm install react router dom. And you go ahead and use dash dash save if you haven't got the latest version of Node. And with that package installed, let's go ahead and open up the code for this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete some files we don't need and some imports from our code. So in the index.js file, let's just get rid of this register service worker stuff as we don't need that. And we can go ahead and delete that file as well. And we can delete the app.test.js file as we're not going to need that either. Okay, so now we're all set up. Let's go ahead and start to look at React Router version 4. So the first thing we need to know, other than the fact it's installed via a different package, is that compared to version 3, we have a few different options for importing routers. So if I look at the code from the last project we built using React Router version 3, we'll notice that when we import from React Router, we import something called router and root. Well, in version 4, we actually have various different router options. And one of those is called a browser router, and that's what we're going to use here. So let's just go ahead and import our browser router. And of course, we're going to import that from React Router DOM. So this is going to be our main router. So again, if we look at the code from the previous implementation of version 3, this is going to replace our main router here. So let's go ahead and just tidy up this render function so we can make things a bit clearer. And let's go ahead and use our browser router. So just like the previous implementation, we just wrap our application in our router. Let's go ahead and import some routes. So import root from React Router DOM. And let's go ahead and change this app component to a root component. So with our root imported, let's just check out how version 3 went ahead and implemented these. So in version 3, you have a root component, you have a path, and then you have the component that you want to render when you have that path met. Now, version 4 is pretty similar, and I'll talk you through some of the differences. But the basic structure is essentially the same. So we have our root, and then we have the path, Let's just go for forward slash. And then we have the component that we want to render when the path matches this path, when the URL matches this path. So with our first route defined and the component we want to render, let's just go ahead and save that and then start our application. So let's run npm start. It's gonna kick off our React app and open up in the browser. And we can see we get our initial app component which is what we expect. So let's have a look at some of the changes in version four. So if we go ahead and just copy this route here and save our application and then head on back over to the browser, you'll notice we get an error. A router may only have one child element. Now, what this means is that our browser router must have only one element. And at the moment, we've got two child elements. So what you have to do in version four is you have to wrap any roots in a containing element. So you have to wrap these in a div. If you go ahead and save that, head on back over to the browser and we'll get our app 
as we expect, we get both app components. And because we're at forward slash and they've both got the same path, we get both components. So that's one change from version three. You have to wrap any root in a containing element. Another change is if we go ahead and add something else to our path, like forward slash home, for example, to our second root and head on back over to the browser. When we go to forward slash, we get a single app component as we expect. But if we go to forward slash home, we actually get both components again. So we get the app twice, which is different from version three and can be quite confusing when you start with version four. So let's just clarify what's going on here. We've got our two root components and they both render the same app component but they have different paths. Now in version three, if you went to forward slash home, you would only get your app component. But in version four, the paths are essentially regular expressions. So what happens is if any path matches this path here, your component will get rendered. So in the case here, when we go to forward slash home, both the path forward slash and forward slash home meet the requirement. They match the regular expression, so they both get rendered. Now, if we wanted to only render our component when we went to forward slash home, so we just wanted one component when we went to forward slash home and one when we went to forward slash, we can use a prop called exact. And what this means is that when your path matches exactly it will only render the component you tell it to. So in our case now, when we go to just forward slash, we'll get our app component. And when we go to forward slash home, this path will no longer match because it's forward slash home. So we should only get one app component at the time. So if we save this and head on back over to the browser, refresh, and if we go to forward slash home, you only get one component. So you can use the exact prop to make sure your path matches exactly. Now it's a little confusing using the app component twice to demonstrate this concept. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you to a new concept in React to version four called render. Now render is a really useful prop. What you can do is you can pass in a function and this function can return some JSX and whatever you pass to this function, sorry, whatever you return from this function will just get rendered to the path that you want it to. So in our case, we are just gonna render our H1 and it's gonna get rendered to our path forward slash home. It's a cool little feature, this one. So head on back over to Chrome and go to forward slash home. You'll see we just get our hello. And that's because we've used the render function here. So you can pass in whatever you want. As long as it returns something that you can use, it's gonna get rendered when you go to that route. And now if we were to remove this exact prop from our app component, we're gonna get both of these components rendered at the same time. So you can see that concept a little bit better. So we get our app component and our hello component when we go to forward slash home. And then we'll just go to forward slash, we only get our app component. So that's a cool little feature and it just means you don't have to pass in an entire React component. You can just pass in a function that returns some JSX and it's gonna get rendered to your root. Nice little feature. So one thing to note about the path prop is that if you don't pass it in, your root is always going to get matched. So if we remove the path component from our app here, and save that, head on back over to the browser, go to forward slash, we get our app component. And if we go to forward slash home, we also get our app component. So just note that if you forget to pass in your path, you're always going to match your root. So no path is essentially saying any path whatsoever render this app component. So that's just one thing to watch out for. So that's just a quick introduction to React Reader version four. In the next video, I'm gonna talk you through the link component, and we're gonna look at a new component called the nav link. 
and all the things that React Router version 4 gives us with this new component. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.